Hello, my name is Alan Prost and I'm giving you a demonstration of the mode of volume control CMV and volume control IMV here on the 840 ventilator as part of the course of REST 220. Now, it's important to understand the different modes of ventilation because it's their interaction between the patient and the ventilator. The mode describes how that's going to occur and what we're trying to control with the patient. In the mode of volume control, CMV, we want the ventilator to do most or almost all of the work of breathing. If the patient's unconscious, the ventilator will go in and give us a set tidal volume and minute volume that we require to control the CO2, pH, and oxygen levels of our patient. The basic controls we have set we're going to review, but I want to describe the mode for you. So, we set a basic rate. Right now, I've got a rate of 12, so it's delivering a breath every five seconds. I've got a tidal volume of 500 mils, so each breath encompasses 500 mils, and it's being delivered at a flow rate of 60 liters per minute. I've got a small inspiratory pause of 0.5 seconds set on this particular ventilator to highlight the difference between the mouth pressures and the actual alveolar pressures. And I'm going to talk about that a fair amount, and I'm going to give you a demonstration of how we can do that with a comparison of mouth pressures versus alveolar pressures. So, some of the other things I can set on the ventilator are the inspiratory trigger or the flow trigger. This particular ventilator responds to patient's inspiratory flow demands. So if the patient does take a small breath, the ventilator will then trigger into inspiration due to that change in flow. I can set the FAO2, that's how I'm going to control the PAO2 of my patient's blood, and I can set the baseline pressure or the PEEP level, the positive and expiratory pressure. So, the basic concept of this mode is the ventilator is going to do all the work of breathing. If the patient's unconscious, it'll be time triggered, flow limited, and volume cycled. So, it responds to time after a certain period of time, every five seconds, it's going to give a breath at 60 liters per minute, so that's the limit. Flow rate will kick on to 60 liters per minute, hold that until my volume of 500 mils is delivered. If the patient does make inspiratory efforts, and I'm demonstrating this by creating a negative flow and negative pressure within the circuit, that would be a, an assisted breath. The time triggered breath, when the patient's doing the work, is a mandatory breath versus a assisted breath when the patient makes inspiratory effort. Every breath that is, the patient receives is being controlled by the ventilator. That's why this ventilation, this mode is known as CMV or continuous mandatory ventilation. So let's look at the waveforms. So we've got our basic mode set up on the ventilator. We've got the mode of assist control or volume ventilation, CMV. We've got our control set here. Here's our rate. Here's our tidal volume, our flow rate. We've got a short inspiratory pause. We're on the square waveform. We've got the flow trigger set, an FIO2, and our PEEP. What's then happening is the ventilator going through our circuit here is delivering those breaths to our patient. And I'm just going to highlight this for a second. The flow rate comes back from through our passive humidity device to our little connector and I'm measuring the pressures on the patient's side. So these are the, actually the mouth pressures. And then we're going through resistor. Now this mimics the endotracheal tube, the small resistor. It's got a resistance of, of 20. And we're going to measure the pressures on the other side. And these are reflective of the alveolar pressures that are actually delivered in the patient's lungs. We're going to see the difference between those highlighted on this graph here. The red indicates the pressures or the mouth pressures. So that's the pressures you would see on the ventilator waveforms. The white line represents or is actually measured the lung pressures within the lung. So you can see the ventilator is giving these higher pressures, the plateau is set, and the pressures in the actual lung itself build up as the volume is being delivered, delivered and then are held for the duration of our inspiratory pause. Our flow rates build up, are held at 60 liters per second per minute, and then we go into a short inspiratory pause and then exhalation. So you've seen these waveforms before, 
but I'm just confirming for you now that they're based in reality, that we can actually see those right on our ventilator and we can measure them. So here's our ventilator waveform as this, as we can see it. Here's our PIP and our P-plat, but we can't see the actual alveolar pressures or the, the pressures actually in the lung. Here's our flow waveform. We can see that we've got a inspiratory flow delivered at 60 liters per minute, and then we go into exhalation after a short inspiratory pause. Because we're on a rate of 12 breaths per minute, a breath is being delivered every five seconds. Now, if I mimic patient inspiratory effort by triggering the ventilator, we're going to see that we can change this waveform. Right, if we look carefully, you can see a little dip here in the pressure waveform as it responds to the patient's inspiratory effort. So every single breath, whether it's either an assisted breath because the patient is triggering the ventilator or it's a time-triggered mandatory breath, the volume being delivered will be 500 mils. We get a confirmation of that up here on our, on our display. Right? It's not exactly 500 mils and we see that there's a little bit of variations in there. And that's because our ventilator and patient lung characteristics are not precise. Some key things to remember about the mode of volume control, continuous mandatory ventilation, or CMV, is that our goal is to do most of the work of breathing for the patient. And to deliver this volume or this minute ventilation regardless of patient lung characteristics. So this is a nice initial mode to put on your patient because when you don't know anything about them, you may want to override any lung disease or any problems that they have to make sure that they're getting somewhat a normal minute ventilation. And that's why we've defaulted to a kind of an average tidal volume, an average rate, and an average flow rate. Now, as the patient's lung characteristics change, this mode of ventilation is oblivious to the patient. So, regardless of the patient's lung characteristics, if their compliance decreases, what will happen is the pressures being delivered to the patient will go up. We'll always deliver that same tidal volume regardless of the patient's lung characteristics. So changes in your patient's compliance will change the P-plat pressure being delivered to the patient. They'll still always get their minimum number of breaths at that set tidal volume at the flow rate you've established. That's the purpose of volume control, CMV. If their compliance improves or increases, we will still deliver that same volume at that same rate, the same minute ventilation, but now their P-plat pressures will decrease. It's unusual, but resistance can change slightly, and it depends on the size of their endotracheal tube, mostly. We have very little difference in lung resistance changes that we can see on the ventilator. But changes in the resistance now don't affect the P-plat pressures. What they do affect is just the PIP, or the peak inspiratory pressure, being delivered by the ventilator. The PIP will go up or down, depending on the resistance, but the P-plat pressures, or the pressures actually delivered to the lung, will stay the same, regardless of resistance. So what's the outcomes from this? We, in this particular mode, volume control, CMV, we guarantee at least a minimum set volume of ventilation for our patient, regardless of lung characteristics. If the lung characteristics change, the pressures delivered to the lungs will change. That's the mode of volume control CMV.